Ultrasonic Polishing of the Posterior Capsule, Steve Dewey, Colorado Springs, Colorado. As if this patient's hand motions cataract wasn't bad enough, he also had an impressive plaque on the posterior capsule. We did get lucky, and while removing cortex with J-cannula irrigation, I found a plane of cleavage between the plaque and the capsule. This plane was expanded with cohesive viscoelastic, and the plaque was peeled, but only with a significant tangential forces on the zonules. We did successfully avoid a YAG capsulotomy, at least for now. As in this example, some residual capsule pacification is clearly evident, but many times this may be as simple as adherent cortical fibers, or a plaque visible at the slit lamp but invisible at the operating microscope. What is the best method for dealing with residual PCO? Dr. Rupert Menapachi has an innovative solution for the problem, just get rid of the posterior capsule or at least the optically significant portion by routinely performing a posterior capsule erexus with optic capture. While there are a number of advantages to this innovative and technically challenging approach, the rest of us have to decide which technique is best in our hands. Is the procedure of our choice going to be safe for the capsule? Can it be efficiently incorporated into the surgery? In a given patient, is it better to defer to a later YAG capsulotomy? Methods of capsule polishing encompass differing mechanisms to achieve this goal. Mechanical abrasion may involve a teri squeegee or roughened olive tip cannula. Adding vacuum stabilizes the capsule against either a standard or silicone tipped INA handpiece. Lastly, adding ultrasound to the INA handpiece has been attempted before. But what of using the FACO needle to polish the capsule? Here is a patient with a 2070 PSE cataract with plaque. Seems straightforward enough, however, she has requested an advanced multifocal optic for a spectacle free result. To what extent can we tolerate anything short of a completely clear capsule to achieve this goal for this patient? Combining mechanical abrasion with vacuum stabilization and utilizing ultrasound, I simply rotate the FACO needle bevel down and aspirate the capsule into occlusion with the lumen. Depressing the foot pedal into position 3, the FACO needle is stroked across the capsule, gently removing not only the plaque but the fine cortical fibers as well. This capsule was wonderfully clear and the patient achieved her desired spectacle independence. Since 1967, it has been assumed that sharp edges are necessary to cut and that ultrasound can break the posterior capsule. Perhaps these two concepts have combined to make surgeons somewhat hesitant to engage the posterior capsule with the FACO needle. If we flip these concepts, the look of the FACO needle can change correspondingly. The Dewey radius tip is a FACO needle with no sharp edges. This modification is available on any standard configuration needle for use on most FACO units without changing techniques or settings. To demonstrate the basis for capsule polishing with the radius tip, I'd like to review the first capsule exposed ultrasound with this needle. A very brief segment of this has been shown previously. This time a longer version better shares my continued amazement with the safety of this tip. Quite honestly, I was expecting this capsule to burst like my child's helium balloon against the ceiling light fixture with the briefest touch of ultrasound. With the cornea removed and with pressure against the globe to push the posterior capsule into an accessible position, I stroked the capsule with the rounded needle. Each of these changes in power required stopping and restarting the process. The capsule did not break with simple ultrasound contact until 83% power was reached and over 38 seconds of FACO power had been applied to the capsule in this area. The tensile characteristics of this capsule survived considerable contact using a rounded FACO needle and active ultrasound, both in regards to total power delivered and duration of exposure. But what of normal levels of vacuum and power seen while removing a cataract? What about occlusion? I have held this example in reserve as this capsule exceeded any expectations of the study. Presented here is a 48 second edit of the 17 minutes it took to break this capsule. By this time, myself, Drs. Nick Mamelis and Liliana Werner were becoming re relatively familiar with the capsule surviving ultrasound applied with a rounded FACO needle. But no one expected any capsule to survive to this extent. The needle was repeatedly applied to the only area visible through the clouded cornea. The integrity of the capsule and zonules was first tested at 400 millimeters mercury with no power. Then, power and vacuum were reset to low levels and increased incrementally. Various combinations were explored until we reached 400 millimeters mercury and the capsule finally ruptured at 50% power. Variability in capsule tensile strength and integrity will undoubtedly be encountered, but the results of the day's efforts with cadaver eyes suggested that the application of low levels of ultrasound in combination of low levels of aspiration and vacuum would allow for safe and efficient polishing of the capsule. Before polishing clinically, it becomes apparent that several guidelines should be followed. 
First, the settings should be created prior to attempting to polish, and automated mode changes should be disabled. With regards to the needle, a straight needle will be brought into apposition with the capsule easier than a bent one. The radius tip itself should be nearly pristine within its first 10 uses, and free of evidence of damage from either excessive use or inappropriate contact. And, especially if a monitor is used, warn the staff that the tip is about to touch the capsule. The gut reaction can be fairly strong. In this example, the J-cannula is used to clear the cortex and improve visualization of the capsule. Polishing can be carried out without clearing the cortex, however, should the capsule break, managing the situation would be easier without residual cortex. Using the J-cannula avoids disconnecting and reconnecting the FACO handpiece. The FACO unit has been pre-programmed for very low levels of aspiration, vacuum, and power. The FACO needle is reinserted into the eye, bevel down, attempting to achieve occlusion with the capsule. In this example, I start with simple vacuum and do see some material removed as visualized in the red reflex. As I continue the process, overlapping the polishing strokes, I stop seeing progress and then begin to depress the foot pedal into position 3, applying power. The capsule or plaque separates from the capsule and this capsule is nearly pristine with the application of only 12 one hundredths of a second of estimated FACO time. In a study published in the December 2006 journal Techniques in Ophthalmology, I reviewed the results of capsule polishing in 11 patients presenting with PSC plaques over a 9-week period in early 2006. 10 of the 11 had no opacification or only mild clouding not affecting visual acuity. One significant plaque remained in a patient with long-standing uveitis. All of the capsules remained intact despite the contact with the ultrasonically active needle and adherent cortical fibers were also removed in the region of polishing. While the thrust of this video has been about the use of ultrasound to assist in the polishing, the radius tip can also be used as a vacuuming device without ultrasound. In this example, the cortical fibers adherent to the capsule were more visible to my eye than the camera. As the needle is gently applied across the capsule using vacuum to achieve stability, the debris accumulates and, very fleetingly, can be seen in the red reflex just to the left of the FACO needle. In summary, while the capsule remains easily damaged by mishandling, ultrasound at low levels appears to be safe to the posterior capsule. Rounded FACO needles are less likely to cause damage than their sharp-edged counterparts. Polishing the posterior capsule with a rounded FACO needle easily incorporates into the surgical procedure and may provide a good alternative to an early YAG capsulotomy.